Welcome back to Coach Cameron's podcast uh, on the Saturday morning. Um, I was had dinner last night with um, our athletic director and Tom Byer. As he presents today at 2.30 um, at Phoenix College, you can still sign up. Um, it's getting close to standing room only, but uh, love to just pack the house as much as we can and not waste his trip since he's traveling all the way from Japan to be here. Uh, I encourage you guys to go. It's 2.30 p.m. today at Phoenix College. You can go to CoachCameron.com or PhoenixCollegeSoccer.com uh, to register online or learn more about it. But at dinner, we're talking about the um, the U.S. soccer players uh, on the men's side release a statement. And it's I love the fact they're attacking U.S. soccer, but... Well, let's just read read a little bit, and then we'll talk about it. Um, I'm just going to skip down to this part. Uh, for the past 40 years, the Federation fought individual player efforts to convince the Federation to pay a fair composition to the professional athletes who represent the United States in international competition. To try to change that, in 1995, the U.S. men's national team players were in the first United States national team in any sport to form a labor organization labor organization they shouldn't form a labor organization on the men's side because they don't labor on our behalf anymore they don't work hard so anything in the statement from the men's national team i'm not a big fan of because they're weak human beings they don't work hard um i don't respect them uh where's it say so th- they made a, so they made a union. I'm not a big fan of unions. Um, so it goes on to say, the U.S. women's national team players followed it, followed a few years later. So now the men's and women's have basically a, a labor union. It took unfair labor practice uh, practice charge charges filed by the U.S. men's national team players and a 1997 National Labor Relations Board action to force the Federation to even recognize and negotiate with the USNSTPA. The fact that your acronym is that long, I won't want to negotiate with you either. After the U.S. men's national team and the U.S. women's national team organized in the late 1990s, a pattern developed that was has continued for more than 20 years with soccer popularity in the United States continually rising. The only way the U.S men's national team players to um, only way for the U S men's national team players to convince the Federation to improve their wages. Oh, please give us more. We deserve it. We work hard. No, you don't not anymore. You should be getting a pay cut. Uh, in 1996, that meant the Federation sending replacement players to play a friendly against Peru. And in 2005, that meant U S soccer calling up lower division replacement players to uh, play for a World Cup qualifier against Mexico. What are you talking about? Wait, wait. Lower play. Who who dictates what's a lower level player? The the fighting will never end because I have a problem with those statements. Lower level. You're all lower level. Uh, the federation norm is forcing players to play. Under expired collective bar- bargaining agreements, no, you're not. You don't have to show up. Um, sometimes for o- over two years, historically, the Federation has justified, justified its unreasonable proposal by claiming its a financial future was uncertain. Yes, it is. I, I love the fact that everyone has everyone has reason to complain about something. If you're wearing the red, white, and blue, stop crying. You shouldn't be paid for playing for that. And I get money is gone. So, you know, fight for that money to go somewhere else. Maybe not in the pockets of U.S. soccer, but needs to go somewhere else. But not in your pockets. Have some respect for the country you represent, but they don't. They care about themselves. They're greedy. The U.S. men's national team players stood together and eventually uh, negotiated uh, substantial increases with the Federation in 97, 01, 05, and 2011. As a result, players' compensations increased. However, it wasn't good enough. Um, So it wasn't fair. They agreed to it. They signed a contract. And then it's not good enough. Good job, U.S. women's national team and men's national team. Uh, Kicking and screaming as usual. Everyone has a reason to complain. 
The U.S. women's um, normally negotiate after the men with our unions working together since 1999. Um, the goal was always to secure for secure for the women uh, comparable gains in pay and working compensation for more than 20 years. Uh, the, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're high road. The, the U.S. men's national team, who sucks, um, we work hard for the women. So please be nice to us. We're, we're nice. This is the way to uh, get back politically with everybody. It, it's not. Ah, uh, this article is just annoying. Uh, I'm I'm just skipping. It just has all this garbage about you know inappropriate funds transitioning, whatever. Uh, so finishes off. What can you do? Tell tell the federation sponsors you will not support them until the federation starts doing the right thing and gives the women a new CBA that pays a fair share of the gate receipts and that tel- television and sub- sponsorships revenues to the players write to your Congress congressional representative and tell them in time to reform uh, their Federation. Let the re- Federation know that you do not believe the false narrative that are circulating, supporting the players, not the Federation. I don't know. It was a lot of reading. I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a big reader, but I, I'm assuming like most people, I'm not a fan of all the social media and all the craziness that goes on where everyone's just kicking and screaming. We need more. We need more. We need more. Give us more. Give, give us more, please. And then you, you agree to the terms and then you're like, ah, no, it's not good enough. We want more. You, you were, uh, uh you were, uh, not fair to us. Bunch of big babies. And what's more annoying is the men's national team or that players association, their stupid union because they work together. They, let me explain something about unions. Unions don't get paid unless they're fighting for something. They're always going to complain about something. That's your job. Complain about something. So, it, okay. They're a bunch of big babies. So uh, watching the U S women's national team, um, win the, uh, CONCACAF or whatever group they're in and, uh, they beat Canada three zero and then they're going and they're all hugging like their best friends. Like they're all hugging the uh, uh, that evil do- doer, the president of U.S. Soccer. They're hugging everybody. Oh yeah, I think they're all in on it. You no, know, they're just like all celebrating. Look, we're going to cause a problem, and you guys are in on it. And then you're going to be forced to give us raises, and then no one can complain or something. I don't know what's going on. But if you're fighting that much and you're complaining all the time. I don't think you're going to be hugging the U.S. soccer president and all the other cronies around there. I'm just, I don't like they, hey, if you're going to fight, fight. So I don't know. This is Coach Cameron on the Saturday morning edition of I'm Annoyed and I have to go because I have jiu-jitsu knocking on the door on a day I'm not supposed to be working. Anyways, all right, peace.